بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم پاکستان اینڈ پاکستانیز آل اوور دا ورلڈ نمستے انڈیا اینڈ انڈینس آل اوور دا ورلڈ اینڈ اے گریٹ ساتری کال ٹو سکھ نیشن ان انڈیا اینڈ آل اوور دا ورلڈ اوکے اے گریٹ ہیلو اینڈ دین دا پیپل آف نیپال سری لنکا دین ان افریقہ دے آر واچنگ مائی ویڈیو سو اے گریٹ ہیلو فرام اسد یعقوب from Lahore, Pakistan. I welcome you all wholeheartedly once again to my IELTS speaking workshop. Some of you were asking me to make some detailed videos on IELTS speaking. Before that, I made some videos on IELTS writing. There I covered all four aspects like le lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy. Uh, then uh, we've got uh, yeah, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy and two other things I don't remember right now. Uh, so uh, now I'm going to make this video on speaking and in this video I'm going to cover all four aspects I mean the criteria of the examiner and I'm going to tell you about that anyways uh, the speaking test is basically an interview I'll not discuss the basic things you know that already the duration of speaking test is 11 to 13 minutes in part one, the examiner will ask you some questions about familiar topics that can be hobbies, family, hometown, environment, daily routine, likes, dislikes, favorites and all that. In part two, I mean this is what we call mini presentation, the duration is three to four minutes and here the examiner will give you a book, uh, a topic or a cue card showing a topic and some suggestions on it. You need to talk about the topic for one to two minutes. And you will have one minute to prepare. They will give you pen and paper to write and all that. And then there is part three. In part three, the examiner will ask you more detailed and more abstract questions linked to the topic in part two because there they want to check your ability to speak English at the advanced level for bench score 8, 8.5 and 9. Anyways, how is speaking paper assessed? Now, this is what I'm going to tell you. The examiner will listen to you carefully and they will also record your voice. The examiner will have an audio device, so they will record your voice and the examiner will listen to you carefully and at the end of the test, they will decide your band score at the same time. They do some, uh, they, they take down some notes also, the examiners, and they write down some points, but don't try to read those notes. Don't try to see whether what band score they are writing for you and all that stuff, okay? Just mind your own business and that is speaking. Sometimes, you know, if examiner, one of my students told me that during my speaking test, I saw examiner wrote five on a paper and he started thinking my band score is five. Then it was only section one. Then there was section two. Then there was section three and he was thinking that the examiner gave me five band and actually that was the test of 5th January. Okay, so please, please be careful. That's why I say mind your own business, right? Okay, uh, well, let's just go on. The criteria, they, actually there are four things and you will get marks 25% for each of these things or each of these criterias. Uh, criteria, the first criteria is fluency and coherence. Very important. Fluency means you speak English without any uh, 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 and ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, 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 like that, okay? Fluency means that, that you speak in a flow and there is a natural flow and that flow can be fast or slow, that doesn't matter. Uh, but do you speak in a fluent way? That is easy to understand and coherence means do you link your ideas together clearly? That's very, very important. So 25% marks will be given for fluency and coherence. The next criteria is lexical resources. Lexical resources means your vocabulary. Can you accurately use or attempt to use a wide range of vocabulary accurately and effectively? Now let me tell you one thing. You need to know the vocabulary which is related to that very topic. Vocabulary does not mean you should speak difficult words, flowery words, long words and lengthy words and all that. It means relevant words with a variety of words, not the repetition. Don't repeat the same words. Use relevant words. Whatever the topic is, if the topic is about your daily routine, you should know how to define your daily routine. That's what they mean by vocabulary. Okay. 
So then we've got uh, uh, a wide range of vocabulary accurately and effectively. Can you explain your ideas even if you do not know a particular word? That's most important. They also check this that can you elaborate some ideas even if you don't know that word. But you know how to express on that word. Even with that you can get 8 or 8.5 bands I'm telling you. Right? So how to express something if you don't know the word they are going to check you on that as well. That is what we call lexical resource. Uh, next, can you use or attempt to use higher level vocabulary accurately? Higher level vocabulary does not mean long words, lengthy words, even examiner is not familiar with those words. It means appropriate words and relevant words. Okay. After that, the next criteria of examiner for speaking test that accounts for uh, one fourth or 25 percent that is grammatical range and accuracy now in this they check your grammar in this they check your sentence structure in this they check your pronunciation uh, your pronunciation is checked actually there it's the last thing so in this they check your sentences whether they are correct or not can you use a wide range of grammatical structures rather than repeating basic structures. So what is the wide range of uh, grammar structures you can use like would, would like, should, must, may, might, all the model verbs. So for that you need to learn the model verbs as well. And then are your sentences accurate or do you often make grammatical mistakes? That's what they are going to check in grammatical range and accuracy which accounts for 25% in your IELTS speaking exam. So far so good, 75% is gone here. The last criteria that is pronunciation. In pronunciation, they are going to see is your spoken language clear and easily understood. Now, do not misinterpret pronunciation with accent. They will not check your accent. They will not see whether you as a candidate speak British English or American English or Australian English. They are only going to see your pronunciation and pronunciation means whatever you speak, is it clear to understand? Is it understandable? Otherwise, you know, if they start checking your uh, accent, then people in China will not be able to get good bands because they speak in Chinese style, right? So it's actually not accent, it's only pronunciation and there you, they see if, if whether you speak the words clearly and they understand them or not. So is your spoken language clear and easily understood? Do you use stress and intonation? Very important part of pronunciation. Now see for example the word is some people say democracy. Now in democracy you are not using the stress pattern. Actually we pronounce this word as democracy. Democracy. Democracy you are putting stress on there. So this is what they are going to check. So it's a good idea to improve your basic pronunciation as well. Not accent only pronunciation. So they are going to check your uh, stress. Then there is another thing intonation. Intonation means uh, voice that brings feelings in your sentences. If I say I was quite excited at that time. Now if I say I was quite excited at that time. I was very happy at that time. I laughed so much when I got the news. I was overjoyed when I heard about my success. <laughs> okay, so I'm not using proper intonation. What is intonation? I was actually overjoyed when I heard the news of my success and I was like dancing and all that. This is what we call intonation. So don't overdo it, but your words and voice, they must match. I mean, there should be a good combination of your voice and words and your voice should match with the words. If I say, well, that was a very sad story. What happened? I saw an accident and there, now see, this is my intonation. And I was quite excited when I attended the wedding and I enjoyed a lot. All my friends were there, my family members were there and we had a lot of fun and that was a tremendous day of my life. Good intonation. So you need to use intonation. Stress and intonation, two things. I gave you good examples of that as well. By the way, you are attending my IELTS speaking workshop. Okay, and workshops are long. That's why I need to cover a lot more. Okay, 
then do you use stress in intonation to add extra meaning and with individual words do you use stress accurately as I gave you the example of uh, democracy so do you use stress pattern accurately or not now I'm going to tell you how to improve your speaking paper score or your speaking module score you can improve your score by making sure you answer each question fully and remembering the test tips which I just gave you right you need to answer fully full answer you need to give a full answer uh, then we're going to learn more about speaking it's just the beginning and remember warning do not try to learn answers for the test if examiner gets to know that this is a crammed answer they will not accept it they will reject it and no bench score will be given on that very answer it's just like you did not say anything be very careful with that uh, studying all aspects of English including pronunciation, vocabulary and grammar will also improve your IELTS speaking test score. Okay, now let's go on. Now, I'm going to tell you about speaking part one and uh, in this video, now in this part of the video, I'll tell you how to get ready to speak, then how to talk about familiar topic, then we will learn how to use the correct tense, how to use correct grammatical range and accuracy. Well, IELTS speaking test is divided into three parts and I've already told you about those three parts. So the examiner can start the test by saying, can you tell me your name please? At this point, remember, they are not going to give you any band score the way you tell your name. Sometimes students are quite concerned about that. They say, okay, when they say, can you tell me your name, please? My name is Asad and Asad is an Arabic word. It means lion and I'm not like a lion. I'm like a cat and my name has no impact on me and I like my name very much. My father named me when I was born. Even before my birth, my father had decided my name and he wanted me to be, uh, he wanted to name me Asad and my father argued a lot. My mother wanted to name me Tariq, but my father said, no, 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 no. <laughs> okay, okay, not like that, not like that. If they ask you, can you tell me your name, please? My name is Muhammad Asad Yaqub or this is Asad Yaqub, something like that. Thank you. And what do you do? This is a very important question. In the beginning, they ask you whether you are a student or you are doing any job. Because afterwards, the examiner will decide whether they are going to ask you questions about job or they are going to ask you questions about studies and all that. So choose carefully and it's up to you. If you think you can handle the questions as being a student and you are a professional, go ahead, tell them I'm a student. And if you think you can handle the questions as a professional and you are a student actually, that doesn't matter. It's all up to you. And it doesn't matter whether you are taking academic IELTS or general training IELTS. There is no problem. It's all up to you. Then, and can you tell me your ID and all that? Can I see your passport, please? Or can I see your ID card, please? And you show them the passport and all that. Thank you. Okay, that's fine. Now, in this first part, I'd like to ask you or let's talk about and then examiner will start speaking test. Okay, now let's go on. There's a test tip. Make good eye contact with the examiner from the moment you enter the room and answer in a polite and friendly way good eye contact with the examiner and answer in polite and friendly way to the examiner your body language is an important part of communicating so it's important for communication actually right uh, and there is no marking criteria for body language in IELTS but still it's important part of communication that's why it should be there all right now let's go on uh, you need to see whether this is a good idea in speaking or not Chewing gum because it helps you to stay calm. Is it a good idea or a bad idea? Very bad. Don't chew gum. Uh, drinking from bottle of water as you are answering the questions. Checking your mobile phone. They will not allow you mobile phone. They will not even allow you water bottles. Today I saw a student at IELTS Center. He was putting his water bottle in his car because they did not allow even water bottle. They are afraid. Uh, using your mobile wearing jeans and t-shirt it's a good idea to wear some formal clothes for your IELTS speaking test asking the examiner your score at the end of the test never do this never ask the examiner and don't try to interact 
with the examiner further they are very professional they will never tell you anything shrugging your shoulder to show you don't know or understand i don't understand your question i don't like this i don't know about that don't do that this is all negative asking to leave the room for a moment during the speaking test so excuse me can i go to the loo please go to the loo before the test or go to the loo after the test not during the speaking test which continues only for 11 to 13 minutes if you want to go to the loo before the test tell the invigilator all right they will take you there and no problem okay there's another test tip make sure you arrive early for your test so that you are not hurrying and have time to relax if possible visit the test center before the day of your test so that you are familiar with where you need to go okay now let's go on uh talking about familiar topics okay now let's go on talking about some familiar topics now i'm going to just give you some familiar topics and i'm going to tell you how to talk about them let's talk about where you live the examiner might say like that what do you like most about your hometown you say well i like the shopping malls in my hometown because there are many shopping malls in my hometown and they are very beautiful and all the international brands are available here so this is the only thing which i like about my hometown like this in part one is your hometown a popular place for tourists to visit and then why and why not remember if your answers are very short in speaking part one and part three the examiner will ask you more and more questions one of my students she told me after her speaking test that the examiner was saying again and again why 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 not and i told her because you were not giving sufficient answers that's why examiner was doing why 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 and after some time the examiner was doing high 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 and the girl was doing high 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 when she got her result because she got only five bands so if you give short answers very short answers in part one and very short answers in part three the examiners will say why 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 again and then they will ask you more questions and then when the result comes then you will say hi 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 we say this out of pain okay so be careful next do you think your hometown has changed much in recent years so these type of questions they are going to ask you and you got to answer now there is a test tip the speaking test should be a natural conversation if you try to give a prepared speech the examiner will interrupt you and ask you a different question be careful i told you in ielts writing and in ielts speaking do not give a prepared speech do not give a prepared answer that is all negative using the right tense grammatical range and accuracy now what you need to do you need to listen to the question carefully and you have to see which tense is examiner making sentence in or what's the tense of the question if the question is how often do you present simple when did you past simple how will you future simple what are you doing doing present continuous how long have you been studying how long have you been present perfect continuous so you should have the sense and when examiner asks you a question immediately you should get to know oh this is present tense oh this is past tense this is future tense this is this this is that and then answer in the same structure and then you can add some more sentences so this is very very important now uh, if they ask you a question like do you prefer means present tense do you write means present do you like to present let's talk about and then they're going to say something so there is a test tip it's important to listen carefully to the examiner's question so that you can answer in the correct tense when answering yes no questions it is important to answer the question and then give reasons for your answer remember just imagine at the end of every question in ielts speaking part one and part three there is a why then automatically your mind or your brain will produce a longer answer don't simply answer yes or no uh, one of my friends a long time ago he applied for usa visa and he went for his uh, interview in u.s consulate here in islamabad and they asked him many questions and most of his answers were yep yep nope nope yep 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 okay he answered like that and at the end his visa application was rejected 
right? So you might be rejected if your answers are only yes, no answers for IELTS speaking. You need to give a long answer. Study tip. Now I'm going to give you a study tip. Spoken language is different to written language. You know that already. And you may make more grammatical mistakes when you are speaking because there is less thinking time. When you speak, there is less time to think. That's why there can be more mistakes. So you need to prepare yourselves very, very well. Try recording yourself as you give the answers to the questions in these uh, uh, in, in, for IELTS when you are practicing. Then write out your answers to see the type of mistakes you are making. Now I just tell you some questions and you got to see how you are going to answer. Think about how you would answer these questions. Do you like to read the newspaper? Then why or why not? Did you enjoy studying when you first started school? Past tense. Would you like to do any further study? Would you? Future. Do you often go out at the weekends? Do you? Present simple. Have you always liked the same kind of music? Have you always liked present perfect tense? So uh, you got to answer like that. Now let's move on to IELTS speaking part 2 which is called mini presentation part 2. Here you got to give a talk and you got to speak up to 2 minutes. The first thing is you need to understand the task. They are going to give you a cue card and on the cue card there will be the question. They will give you pen and paper. You can jot down the notes. So the first thing is you need to understand the question. Understand the cue card. Then you got to improve your fluency and coherence to answer, to speak for two minutes maximum. And then you got to keeping going. Keeping going means you got to keep on going. I mean, you need to speak fluently for up to two minutes. Sometimes if you try to stop before a minute, the examiner will give you a gesture like this. Now, it does not mean stand up and go back home. It means continue your talk. Okay. <laughs> it, it's not that examiner says like this and you put your hands there and you say, okay, this is the game I used to play in my childhood. So, you know, you need to keep going and then you have to organize your notes and your talk. Whatever you are going to say at the time of speaking, the topic is going to be in front of you. Your notes are going to be in front of you. You can take a look at the cue card. You can take a look at your notes. So you need to organize in such a way that you could speak for one to two minutes. The topics can be given like describe a time when you helped someone. You should say who you helped and why, how you helped this person what the result was and explain how you felt about helping this person. So you can write down some notes, organize your notes and remember at the time of speaking, do not stop to see how you help this person. Oh yes, I helped this person in such a way that and what the results was. Don't do this. I mean, as you are talking and uh, well, uh, the person was my relative and he was in need of help and what happened I just uh, he wanted to pay off his fee and he didn't have the money and I paid him some money for that and the result of this action was great he was so much thankful to, like this do not stop and do it so thank you very much this was a short workshop about IELTS speaking I hope you would have understood everything. This is how you got to do. For part three, I will make a separate video and there I'll explain part three. If you like this video, hit on the like button and don't forget to subscribe my channel. If you uh, want to learn more, you can subscribe my other channel, Asad Yaku Vlogs as well. I also teach IELTS online. If you want to join my online IELTS classes, you can contact me for that. Asad Yaku wishes you all the best. Take care. Allah Hafiz.